So tonight is October 2nd, 2015. It is exactly 55 years to the day that Lane's Volorama opened its doors to the public. Uh, looking back this year at the things that we've done, we established an Ed Lang Memorial Scholarship Fund that was amazing. We did a car show to benefit our neighbors, the Rhode Island Community Food Bank, and now kind of culminating in this, we've done a couple of other smaller events with bands, local bands and that kind of stuff with Steve Smith and the Nakeds, who is an iconic Rhode Island band. Um, we partnered with Narragansett Beer, who's actually celebrating their 125th this year, so they've got a few years on us. <laughs> um, but to be able to partner with other local iconic businesses like that has really, really been amazing. The immediate question, how does it come around, actually leads to a much more interesting story, which is our grandfather and who he was and yeah. what happened in his life. So he was born to Hungarian immigrants in, on the Lower East Side of New York. He was one of nine brothers and sisters. And he dropped out of school in fourth grade and became a roller skate messenger on Wall Street. And we're like, well, how'd you know how to roller skate? And you'd say, I didn't know how to roller skate, but if I told him that, I would never have gotten the job, you know? And so he became a salesman. and. Um, he sold a little of everything and he became the national sales director for NCR, National Cash Register. Which that was, was a big deal back yeah, then. Yeah, big, big deal. That'd be like Apple now. Right. No, computers didn't exist and they were the cash register company. He went from National Cash Register to the AT Cross Pencil Company. And most people think of the Cross Pencil Company as the Cross Pen Company today. I guess the ballpoint pen had been invented and he was really pushing them. If you guys come out with a ballpoint pen, I'll be able to sell the living daylight. And it was out. only fountain pens before that. That's what right. it was used. Right. Yeah. Many, many years later, I want to say this was, you know, in the last decade, we were in this office with our father. We were, we'd come in every now, maybe every couple of years, we'd do an assessment of the building. I don't know, but the three of us were meeting here, and it was pretty dusty in here. And there's a pen set that was always, this pen set was always on the desk. And I think it was Dave went like this. And we look at it. This is like the end of a movie, man. This yeah. is just incredible. So, so the owner, the brothers of the of, of AT Cross were the Boss brothers. And Ellery Boss is one of them. And, and here it says, To Ed Lang, the man who made me a millionaire, Ellery Boss, December 6th, 1967. And we just couldn't believe it. It was like he was 30 years past. Or 20 years, he was probably 20 years he probably. passed away. Yeah. And here he was coming back from the grave to say, I told you so. And he just dreamed of having a bowling alley. And he basically just worked on it until he could get some partners and financing and everything else. And they broke ground uh, in 1960. He was not a serious guy. He was a great businessman, but he'd be out there and schmoozing and making people He had people charisma. Laugh. Like, you know when you meet someone and you can't figure out why they're the center of it, they just shine? You know, any person who came in here, if you came in here, to bowl one day on a Saturday night, he was going to meet you, shake your hand, and ask you if you wanted to join a bowling league. Do you like, do you like to walk up and down the concourse, sit at the snack bar, talk to different bowlers, different people? Um, again, he was a salesman, so that was what he enjoyed the most, was talking to people. He was just a great man altogether. I mean, he knew the bowling business. Uh, he helped a lot of people. Uh, including myself, and he was just a great bowling promoter for the, for the state of Rhode Island. He actually was very outgoing, though. A joy to be around. Bruce Lang is our dad. He was an executive in New York, so he was up early, he was home late, he was dissatisfied with the amount of time he could spend with us, and he realized, like, this is never ending. This is going to be my life. I am going to be working 15 hours a day, commuting into New York. Yeah, Bruce uh, was working as a... Um, Vice President for CBS in New York when um, I guess he got tired of the rat race there and he came home and he came in uh, with a whole different perspective as, as, as far as marketing and things of that nature that uh, it kind of opened things up a little bit. And my dad was a very confident guy. So he had plans that he was gonna turn this into one of the premier bowling centers in America and bring the professional bowlers tour here and all that kind of stuff, right? He made you feel special. He made you feel important. He made you, you were significant. And that was the thing I loved about him. And of course, a great businessman as well. So in 1972, my grandfather finally convinced my dad to, to come up. And they worked together until 1983, which is when they leased the bowling center to AMF. 
The dark years, uh, yeah, I call them the dark years because AMF was strictly profit driven, so they never really did any upgrades or whatever. Whereas where we are today, we're top of the line uh, facility once again. One night we were having a meeting with Rick and David and they said they were coming back. And that was lighting me back up again because I knew we were going back to what we used to be here and that's family orientation and just funly atmosphere. Most people who come here just love it. I don't know what that is. There's, you know, it's more than just like I went bowling. There's some special feeling here. You know, it's almost like something that, as we're talking, that, that got created long ago. People were always like that here. This was never a chain bowling center or another bowling center, you know. There's all the other ones. There's, you know, there was the Warwick, East Providence, Woonsocket, this place. But then there was Langs. We've been able to be part of bringing that back. There's, there's a comfort for Rhode Islanders in things that still represent Rhode Island. And Langs is one of those places. To a Rhode Islander, there's this feeling of like, this is a little place of home. It's not a chain bowling alley. It's not a totally fashioned out bowling alley that you have to be, what am I, am I wearing? Am I dressed nicely enough? Or, you know, I have to keep the table neat. It's, it's clean and it's beautiful and it's fun, but it's just a chilled spot to come have a good time. And the staff is that way. It's not like you go into some really nice clubs and the staff is totally uptight and hoity-toity and cooler than everyone. The feeling here is just, you're number one, we welcome you here, you know, as long as you just follow the basic rules, we just want you to have a good time. Seeing a customer in need of scoring help or a drink, food and beverage, anything, we're, we're there to, to uh, assist them and make their experience a lot better. Week after week, we get a lot of repeat customers. We, they come in, we talk to them, we wow them, we, we pick their brains, what they like, what they're into, and if we can make it happen for them, we make it happen for them, whether it's music selection or whatever goes on the TVs, like next to the lanes. One of the things they wanted to do was bring in um, staff that was knowledgeable about bowling. So they started hiring, uh, you know, like for some of the positions, they would hire some of the kids that I've been training who knew how to set up the, uh, put the names in, make score changes, and you know, very comfortable with the computer monitors and things like that. So it really has been a family legacy for us. It's really been kind of keeping that thing alive, but that it continues to exist as that sort of iconic local place that people associate with Rhode Island. It follows in the Lang's tradition. Class, they all have class. They, they provide a real good, great place for us people to come, go and enjoy ourselves. And, I know uh, on behalf of all the bowlers, because I hear all the, you know, Benny around, I know a lot of people. They all say the same thing. It's what a turnabout and what a refreshing turnabout. They're great guys, just like their, their dad and their grandfather. I look forward to coming down here on Sunday morning. It's fun. I don't know what I would do on a Sunday without that, you know. I think it's what every bowling center should be, to be honest with you. Uh, a fun place for people to go. A place where people can forget about their nine to five. Um, a place where people can meet great friends and build long lasting relationships. To everyone, the bowlers, the former bowlers, the former employees, and everyone that was included in the video, Thank you guys so much. It's because of you that Lang's Bolarama has the history that we have. It's because of you guys that we'll continue on into the future. And it's because of you that we made this video to show everyone what amazing people made up Lang's in the past and in the future. So thank you all for taking the time, for letting me harass you into being on film, and for sharing your stories. The one and only Carl DeRosa, yeah, that's for yeah. sure. We just it's, talked a lot about true, Carl. It is true, it is real. We've talked a lot about Carl, but you know, in business, we've both had a lot of business experience. You hire people, people come and go. It's very rare that you feel you've got someone you can rely on 110%, that you can trust, you know, without even calling yet, he's gonna do what needs to get done, and just call every single day does an A+. Plus. We are just so thrilled to have him. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. It means a lot. Guy.